Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Lester Memorial United Methodist Church. Good morning to our radio and television congregation. Nice having you worship with us this morning and hope things are going nicely with you. Got a couple of announcements I'd like to share with you. Uh, and then one comment. Uh, let's find out where I started. Anyway, our Ash Wednesday service will be at 6 o'clock here in the sanctuary this Wednesday evening. Uh, it'll be after the fellowship dinner over in the, in the fellowship hall, so please uh, make note of that and uh, celebrate recovery. Of course, it's at 5.45, and uh, I was trying to find the one that's important about the uh, charge conference. I'd be on Tuesday, February the 16th uh, during the administrative council meeting, so uh, Need to mark that on your calendar also, please. This morning, uh, we will be following the sermon. We will be receiving Holy Communion, and we're going to do it a little bit different uh, than we have before. But just remember, we're going to do it kind of like the Christmas Eve service where each of the sides will come down and then go back up the wall side. That's basically uh, the main difference, but sometimes we get kind of confused down here on which way to go. We'll try to do a better job uh, directing, if you will. Uh, I think that's all I have at this time, other than I'd like to welcome any of you who may be visiting with us this morning and hope that your visit will happen again, and if it happens a third time, we call you family, so uh, come on back. We want you to, to feel comfortable here. May God truly bless us as our worship. Thank you. First hymn is number 395, Take Time to Be Holy. Let's stand and sing.
Let us remain standing and affirm our faith of the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Thank you. you. may be seated. And before we do our, <clears throat> do our prayer time, Jane Ann has something to share with us. Good morning. I'm Jane Ann Neesmith. This is the most appropriate time to tell you. Um, I will be leading a Kairos, which is a three-day spiritual weekend, much like the Walk to Emmaus, the end of February at Aliceville Federal Prison. The prison was hit this week by a tornado. And so there's a lot of uncertainty if the weekend will be then or be delayed. I just come to you this morning and ask for your prayers for the women of Aliceville, for the team. Um, many of you will never have the opportunity to go into a prison, yet Christ tells us in Matthew to visit the sick, to feed the hungry, and to visit those in prison. You can be a part without a, ever setting foot if you will commit to pray for the women of Aliceville. Thank you. I covet your prayers. I remind you of the prayer requests that are uh, in your, in, on the insert in your bulletin. I, I have some folks to add to that today. Uh, I want to especially ask you to be in prayer for Sylvia Fowler as uh, she's having a hard time right now. So please just pray for her that God is with her and the family and during these difficult days, and also a young lady, uh, I think she's a student at Susan Moore, Haley Hawkins, that was in a, a really bad car accident some time back and uh, is having some real difficulties. I'd like for you to remember her and add her to your prayer list. And also, uh, Rick Townsend's father uh, passed away, Jim Castor. Uh, the funeral is set for Tuesday at 1 o'clock at the Blunceville Funeral Home visitation tomorrow night. And also, uh, Charlie Finley passed away. Many of you already know that. Charlie's a longtime uh, part of Aniana, the city of Aniana. And uh, his visitation is this afternoon, I understand, with the funeral tomorrow at 11 at Limley. So please remember them. And then I just found out a, a few moments ago that Nell Weaver, uh, which is Mike Weaver's mother, had passed away. So please remember that family in your prayers as well. So would you join me as we pray together? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, God, so much for your love and your grace and, and your mercy. Thank you, God, that as we gather on this day, we gather in the uh, sweet and holy and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, all these prayer concerns are important. God, there are think people here who, who need our prayers and God need the touch of your hand on their lives. There are many here who are grieving. God, we pray for comfort and strength for those who are going through this difficult time of loss. But, God, we also know there are others who are, have, have health issues that they're struggling with. And, God, we pray that you be with them and remind them, God, of your grace and your comfort during their difficulties. We pray for healing where that's within your will. God, we believe that you're the God who heals us. We just absolutely trust, God, that our health is in your hands and there's really no better place for us to be. So, God, we thank you that you do care about us and the, and the things we go through. And Father, we pray for our men and women who are in the military. Lord, as we lift them before you, we pray for uh, protection. God, we pray for your presence with them and their families while they're separated. And God, we ask always that those who are in harm's way that you bring home safely. And God, we pray for an end to war in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. 
And God, today, uh, also, we want to pray for the persecuted Christians throughout the world. There's so many who are suffering and going through difficulties and struggles. And God, we pray for them, God, as we lift them before you. We pray, God, that you touch them by your, by your hand to give them comfort in their time of trial and give them courage and be with their families also, Lord. And thank you, God, for our worship. We just ask your Holy Spirit to be in charge of our worship this morning. And God, as we uh, spend this time today renewing our covenant with you, God, we pray that uh, each of us would be challenged. God, that each of us would find that, uh, that, that we're uniquely your son or daughter. And God, that we have this wonderful opportunity to live in this world today uh, as such. And God, I thank you for our worship this morning. God, pour your spirit out upon us, Lord, and help us to know that we are, have been in your holy presence before we leave here today. And we pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn is number 419, I am thine, O Lord. Let's pray. God, thank you for this moment to sing to you, God, to hear from you. Lord, thank you for all that we have. God, for all that we have has come from you. 
God, now we give back to you a portion of our many blessings. God, would you bless both the gift and the giver. And I pray above all things you're glorified. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
in John Wesley's uh, covenant service, we have the following uh, one short prayer and then, and then the other prayer of renewing the covenant. The first one is, let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. And then the follow-up prayer is, Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. Now, uh, we're encouraged to uh, do the renewal covenant ever so often. Uh, some people like to do it at the first of the year as the year gets started. Uh, we decided this year that we were going to do a, a, not exactly a covenant renewal service, but similar to that uh, as we lead into the Sunday before we get into Lent. Uh, so this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, so I wanted to begin my series of sermons, Portraits of Jesus from the Gospel of Luke. Uh, I hope you re did the readings this past week. The message is coming from Luke chapter 3, uh, verses 3. Uh, 15 through 18 and 21 through 22. So let's read the scripture. He, that is John, went into all the country around the Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. Verse 21. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Almighty God, thank you for this word. We just simply ask, God, that you speak to us today. Help us to hear the things that you want us to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, our first look at Jesus from the Gospel of Luke is Jesus' beloved Son, which really is in the Gospel of Luke and really in all the Gospels, it's the launching of Jesus' ministry is his baptism. So we're told in John uh, in Luke 3, that John went into all the country around the Jordan preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. Since Jesus was without sin, why did he come to John for baptism? Now, I'll be honest with you, uh, I, I've read different takes on this from different theologians. Theologians have been wrestling with this for a while and trying to, trying to come up with a good thing, but, but here's where I think we land. The key thing for us to think about is the word identification, okay? The, the words from heaven, you are my son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased, are a clear and public affirmation that Jesus is the Messiah. Two passages of Scripture from the Old Testament, Psalm 2-7 and, and Isaiah 42-1, were, were always thought by the Jewish community to be uh, uh, Scriptures about the coming Messiah. And I want to read those to you, Psalm 2, 7. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, you are my son. Today I've become your father. So here Jesus at his baptism, the words from heaven, you are my son. Then from Isaiah 42, 1, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. Now listen to what it says. Uh, the one I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. Now hear the words spoken over Jesus from heaven. 
You're my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. So, so there's, there's no doubt then that anyone who's around, when this voice comes from heaven, this is the Messiah. This is God's anointed. We're, we're making this public announcement today. And we want everyone to know that Jesus is the anointed one, the Messiah who, who had been predicted for many years was coming into the world. So, so we have this public declaration that, that Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, I tell people this when they're being baptized. We, we do make our public profession of faith, but God is also making a public declaration that you belong to Him. Whether it's through myself or someone else who's baptizing you, that there's that public word from God that you belong to Him. Okay? Now, there, there's also the matter of Jesus' identification with us. Though He was out without sin, He became sin for us, so His baptism really was an act prior to His becoming sin on the cross for us. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21, God who... God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Now that didn't happen until Jesus went to the cross. He became sin for us on the cross. So his baptism for uh, the, the repentance for the forgiveness of sins was an act prior to his actually becoming sin for us. Now, I, I hope you'll spend just a moment and think about the implications of that. What that means is simply this, that, that you and I have no claim to God except through the forgiveness of our sins. That Jesus took our sins upon himself when he went to the cross. And you and I could not have this relationship with God. You and I could not receive the, the wonderful bounty of forgiveness from God if Jesus had not done for us what we could not do for ourselves. So, so this is a pretty big deal. His identification with us in his baptism. Though, though, he didn't, though he had no sin at the time, it was preparation for the cross which awaited him about three years down the road. So he had, he's identified as God's son, but he also identifies with each one of us in who we are and our, and our need uh, for forgiveness. Now I won't embarrass anyone by asking you if you're perfect. Anybody want to take a shot at that? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, I, I have, I've, I've actually met a person or two over the years who thought they were perfect. Uh, didn't take me long to figure out they weren't. I, I don't think they could see it, but None of us are perfect. The Bible says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's, that's you, that's me, that's all of us together. Jesus is the only sinless person who ever lived. And yet on the cross, he became sin for us. He took our sin to the cross for us. So when, when we're baptized, we're, we're making our public profession of faith that, that we accept what Christ has done for us. Now, I, I tell people this all the time. Uh, th th there is nothing magical about the water. It's, it's a symbol uh, in a lot of ways. It's, uh, we watched this video in our Bible study the other night, Jesus, our sacrament. And it talked about the woman coming up and touching the hem of Jesus' garment. And Jesus said that power went out from him. So he says to the woman, your faith has made you well. Well, it wasn't really her faith who made, that made her well, but it was exercising her faith in the man. And the power came from Jesus for the healing. Now, when, when we're baptized, there's nothing magical about the water, but our faith is touching the water. The power for our forgiveness is in the person of Jesus. Now, the same thing's true of Holy Communion. That there's nothing magical or superstitious or powerful about bread and juice. But the bread and the juice are what our faith can touch. And we receive the power from the man to remind us of what he's done for us. And I don't know about you, but that, that really uh, gets me excited about baptism and Holy Communion because I know that my faith can touch these things, just like that woman touched the hem of his garment. That was the thing that her faith touched. 
You and I can touch the water, we can touch the bread and the juice, but the power, you see, comes from the man. The man Jesus. The power for forgiveness. The power for that woman's healing. The power, power for us to be in relationship with Him. All of that comes from Jesus. So baptism is for us the sacrament where we recognize, celebrate, and public, publicly profess our forgiveness of sins through Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And God publicly identifies us with Jesus as His child. Now, I hope you caught that. At Jesus' baptism, the voice comes from heaven, and it says, You're my son, whom I love. You're my son, whom I love. In a little while, in a few moments, we're going to renew our baptism, or reaffirm our baptism. It's an opportunity for us to hear those words, you're my son or you're my daughter, whom I love. I don't know about you, but occasionally I need to hear that. I, I, I tried to, you know, you, you, you think normally you can find anything on a Google search, but I couldn't find the one I was looking for this morning. I, I wanted to know how many times in the Old Testament that they had these times of renewing the covenant. And, and there were several, actually. And, and I got to thinking about how often the people of God did that. Well, there was, it's obviously why, because after a while they forget who they are. After a while, they get tied up in their own uh, order of affairs, their own business, and they, they forget who they are. And so they would have these times when the people would gather and they would renew the covenant. Well, that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to renew the covenant between you and God that was symbolized by your baptism where God said, you're my son or you're my daughter whom I love. You know, sometimes we just need to receive that from God. There are times when that's the only word from God we need to hear. You're my son, you're my daughter, and I love you. Because we're sinners, and because we get off track, sometimes we wonder if God loves us. Sometimes we wonder about His love for us. I don't know about you, but I've experienced that many times in my life. And, and I look at my life, and, I, and I'm talking to God, and I say, God, how, how could you possibly love me? But then he reminds me, well, I love you because I created you. I made you. And my son Jesus died on the cross for you. Finally, John was part of a movement of the people toward God. Now, I will say this. John the Baptist wasn't a catalyst, okay? The catalyst was the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist was a player, okay? That God called for a specific thing, and as the Spirit was moving, and, and these people were realizing that their connection with God wasn't where it needed to be, they were hungry to find some way to know God. And so the one thing they could hear was John the Baptist out in the wilderness preaching this baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and they saw there's an opportunity for us to do something, a place, something for our faith to touch. To tap into the power of God for forgiveness and reconciliation. This morning, as we come to the Lord's table, as you come, we're going to put water on your forehead and remind you that you're in a covenant relationship with God. And you're His son or His daughter that He loves. And so we hope that when you come, that you'll think about where you are with God. And, and this will be an opportunity for you to remember and to renew your covenant with God. Because being in, in relationship with God uh, re really is a covenant. In fact, we call that in the book of worship, all the baptismal services are called a covenant of baptism. 
And after you receive the water, then you'll partake of communion to remember that why you're in this covenant is because Jesus gave himself for you, for us. You're invited afterwards, if you, if, after you take communion, if you want to stop and kneel and pray, I encourage you to do that. But what I hope you'll do is take this time to renew this covenant with God and your walk with God and all the things that you do. Now, we've gonna, got a couple of things we're going to do. We're going to do a brief uh, preparation for communion, and then we're going to do a preparation for our reaffirmation of baptism. So on page 12, Christ our <clears throat> Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. During the Passover meal, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And then he took the cup. When he had blessed it and given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Would you pray with me? Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. On the inside cover of your bulletin uh, is a, a, a time of preparation for us to renew our covenant with God. And so I, I call your attention to that. Uh, Zach, do we have that on the screen? No? Okay. All right, it's in your bulletin on the inside cover. Sisters and brothers in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, God's Spirit has been poured out upon the water. Water poured over and immersing us. Water that flows freely for all who will receive it. Water from the streams of God's saving power and justice. Water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness. Water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. Today we come to the waters to renew our commitments in each other's presence to Christ who has raised us, the, the Spirit who has birthed us, and the Creator who is making all things new. So I ask you, will you turn away from the powers of sin and death? We renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of our sin. Will you let the Spirit use you as prophets to the powers that be? We accept the freedom and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Will you proclaim the good news and live as disciples of Jesus Christ, his body on earth? We confess Jesus Christ as our Savior, put our whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as our Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you be living witnesses to the gospel, individually and together, wherever you are, 
and in all that you do. We will remain faithful members of Christ's holy church through our prayers, our presence, our service, our gifts, and our witness, and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. Will you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? We affirm and teach the faith of the whole church as we put our trust in God, the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, His only Son, and in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to ask those who are going to help serve if you'll come. Tyler, this water is a symbol of your covenant with God. You're his beloved child. This is the body of Christ given for you. This water is a symbol of your covenant with God. You're his beloved daughter. This water is a symbol of your covenant with God. You're his beloved daughter. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Who's taking it out? Okay. Go stand up.
I want to read those two covenant prayers again. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. And the second is this, Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.